Hello, my friends. Welcome or welcome back. I am your local art witch, and today we are hitting the tens of the minor arcana. From left to right, we have the wands, the cups, the swords, and the pentacles. Here, we have reached the ultimate conclusion of each story, how each element wants to portray a theme. The overall theme of 10 is access. 10 is the highest number we can achieve in the minors before we reach the court cards. We're seeing each element kind of at the highest temperature, the highest part of the element that it can attain. Here we see that the responsibilities of wands has this character bent over. She is overwhelmed. This is celebrating family, happiness. The swords. We revisit this idea of suffering, of being overwhelmed by thoughts, words. And I like this too, where the character has a phone, being overwhelmed by what's happening either through YouTube or Facebook, Instagram. And then we have the pentacles. We have achieved a lot of our goals. We see that they have plenty of love, family, wealth. Very materially comfortable in this card. If we go back to the wands when it is upright, we're seeing this character traversing the desert. There's always a character of some kind being overwhelmed by all the staves or wands that they're carrying. What I enjoy about the way that this card in particular is depicted is that she's got these wands all in her hands. It is blocking her view. And the positive part of that is we see that she has either all these responsibilities, all these problems that are overwhelming and overburdening her. But because she's her vision is blocked here, she's not aware that her burden is very close to being lifted. Help is on the way. She just has a little bit further to go. And that's the positive part that I see in this card. When I pull this card for myself, it does tend to be in a time when I'm just so overwhelmed, I literally can't see straight. And it's a reminder to kind of take a step back, take a breath, maybe delegate some tasks instead of trying to do it all on my own. We have the Ten of Cups, the excess, the ultimate point of the cups. We have this family. We can see that there's a lot of joy. They're overlooking all of their abundance. And this idea of love of family, love of friends, Perhaps even a journey that has recently ended. Really good feelings of joy. So this is quite a positive card. The Ten of Swords. The Swords in general I find to be kind of a difficult element to work with. This quality of air of our intellect. The way we communicate with each other. With ourselves. How we absorb the information that we're receiving. So this character's laying on the ground. I really, really enjoy the way that this one is depicted. Generally, it's a guy kind of in the dirt with all these swords in his back. But this one is so true of our modern culture, is that we are feeling completely defeated by everything we're doing, everything we're thinking and feeling. But there's a sense of normalcy of denial, perhaps, of all of our problems, trying to distract ourselves by either scrolling too long or trying to be hyper aware of everything that's going on because we feel like we're not being grateful or mindful if we're not finding out everything that's happening in the world. And that's not healthy either. So that's something that I just really enjoy about this card. Like this card is one of the ones that just speaks the most to me out of probably any of the cards in this deck. 
I feel like we've all had this moment right here. We have the Ten of Pentacles. And the way I always read this card is I almost see myself as the older character in the story. We have achieved our wealth. Our children have grown up. We've got all this material gain, worldly gain, that it does make us feel good. It's not that. It's all the things that the world tells us is important for us achieve, to achieve. We've done it. We've gotten it. But sometimes I find with this one where it's pentacles, it's all earthly, material, keeping up with the Joneses type of stuff. So there's a chance that we've abandoned maybe our more spiritual needs. But overall, very beneficial card. Each element wants to express its number in a different way. Fire is an action element. Cups is an emotion element. Swords is communication. And pentacles are those worldly monetary gains, desires. All of them together work to give us like a full life. With any of these missing, you're going to feel it. We can achieve all of this, but without the spiritual aspect, we're going to feel lacking. We can be super spiritual, but if our needs aren't being met, we're lacking in different ways. Being overburdened by our responsibilities inhibits this desire to have action. Fire wants to be moving. So when it's being inhibited, there's a lot of frustration behind it. The reversals, I always read as not direct opposites, but the inverse of the natural energy that it wants to display. So for the Ten of Wands, upright, we are traversing, we have all these burdens, they are very close to being lifted from us, but we're not able to see that. In reversal, the risks that we might be taking are being, you're afraid of them. We are overestimating our own abilities. As we can see, she has quite the burden on her. And in reversal, it is much more likely that these are so burdensome that we're going to have a much harder time getting to this town, getting to a place of respite, of refreshment. Love, spiritual happiness, friends, success, especially with work in the public, dealing with others, dealing with those emotional elements, is the Ten of Cups upright. In reversal, where cups are about relationships, love, family, this can indicate a betrayal of some kind, a fear, possibly, of your feelings toward a potential relationship, maybe even fear of achieving this, you know, because brain science is pretty interesting. So there's a fear of betrayal. Something is going on when this cup is upside down. The cups, what helps me remember is the water is pouring out when it's upside down. So we are losing something in general. That's not true of every single card, of course. The Ten of Swords upright, we have hit an extremely low point. Perhaps honesty has kind of broken us. Swords is the element of error, which is communication with ourselves, with each other, online, things like whatever's happening here. There are themes of backstabbing, particularly with the cards where the person is face down in the mud and the swords are literally in his back. This one, it's all in her sides and she's still trying to just pretend like everything is normal, which I feel is more representative of how a lot of us can feel day to day. So upside down though, these negative traits 
is relieved. We have this idea of the end of something is coming, the end of a spiritual darkness, a mental darkness, self-acceptance, and promises of courage and the ability to get up, rise again, the and very soon, because air is a very is a pretty fast moving element, the end of a painful period is indicated when it's upside down. Swords is funny in that it's one of the few suits that prefers I shouldn't say prefers. It's one of the suits that I prefer to see it upside down because it's swords is a very difficult suit where it deals with kind of the mental dimension the our words are how we perceive ourselves it can be quite painful and so i think that's part of the reason why swords is such a difficult suit with pentacles over here once again this idea of excess that has been repeated throughout our tens here we have achieved our family we've achieved wealth we've gotten it together we can even share this wealth that we've earned because we're comfortable enough to do so. It refers to, you know, property, achievement in career, monetary gains, perhaps establishing a tradition that will be carried on. Maybe even an inheritance might be coming. Here it's a little bit more negative. We're seeing these ideas of restrictive family ties as opposed to this nice peaceful looking family something is restricting us when it's upside down family problems as in like the family members their differences are pulling them apart financial issues if i was to get this read where it's all 10 this idea of access too much it's going to be a pretty confusing time for us. There are both ideas of fast movement and slower movement, so I would be expecting it to be in a sort of medium amount of time, which isn't very definitive, but you can sort of feel it based on if you're feeling these two in particular, because we always notice as humans these when we're feeling really burnt out, overburdened, overwhelmed. And it's harder sometimes to see the more beneficial side. So if we're already overburdened, we can know that very relatively soon, we're going to be seeing the, the harvest of our hard work. We're going to be succeeding in something and we can have these endings here. Now, these are one of the things, like if this is exactly the order I pulled it in, I would read these depending on what my situation is. Like if I was feeling these two, I would expect that it would resolve roughly like this. However, if I was having a time of plenty, things are working out. This is warning me that things are coming. I would say that, let's say I'm comfortable, my spiritual and family needs are being met, my monetary and living means are being met, I'm happy with my career. I would know that change is coming. I would suspect some kind of betrayal, overwhelm, maybe jealousy where we're seeing this character on the phone. Maybe I'm seeing things on Facebook. Maybe I'm feeling dis discluded, I was going to say, and an overwhelm in the responsibilities that I am trying to manage. So I don't, depending on who I'm reading for, what the situation is, for myself at least, I'm okay with sort of moving things around. I see tarot as a way of accessing my own subconscious and it gives me more of a bird's eye view of my own situation, which I find very helpful. It can be difficult when you're in a situation to see 
things more fairly without judgment. I compare it often to the difference of being in a house and I think people are, you know, after me and watching a character in a movie and she's running around and she runs upstairs and you're yelling at her because you know what the bad guy in this movie is doing. That's the difference between being in that house and watching the character from this outside view. And that's what tarot does for me. I think of it as spicy psychology. It helps me target my subconscious and my intuition in a way that I can't normally because I'm mired in it. I'm kind of stuck in the mud. And that's one of the major reasons why I love tarot so much and why I love this deck, the Modern Witch Tarot in particular, because I relate to the imagery, little hints of modern life, of diversity, just makes me feel like I can connect with these cards so much more. So those are the tens. Next time we're going to start going over the court cards. That is going to be a bit of a longer video. I was going to separate them, but I think they read better together as a family. So if you're into this type of content, let me know. I really enjoy doing these with you. So if you can leave a like, if you enjoy the content, feel free to subscribe. It's free. And I've been your local art witch. I'll see you all next week. Take care. Bye-bye for now.